we want to replace this sump pump. First, we want to make sure we have a utility pump here in case we have to evacuate water. It's a good idea to have that on hand ready, set up with the hose to a point where the water can be gotten rid of quickly. The second thing we want to do is disconnect power from the primary pump. And then, depending upon your lid type, we'll remove the lid and set it off to the side. And then the next step is we have to disconnect the check valve. This particular check valve has a threaded connection. There will be water beneath this check valve to here, so be prepared to have a little bit of water spilling. And you could have some water spill from the upper side of the check valve. Okay, now we're going to put a towel down beneath the PVC assembly so that we can contain the water that's going to come out of the check valve assembly. I'm going to continue to loosen this nut. You'll hear a little bit of a hiss. That's perfectly normal. Now that we have the check valve disconnected, we need to remove it from the pit. In order to do that, a little trick that I do is I take the lid, set it off to the side of the pit. I slowly raise up the assembly and I let it rest on the edge of the lid to help it drain. We want to make sure our pit is clean. In order to do that, we're going to lower our utility pump down inside the pit. Next, we're going to connect the pump to power. And it begins to evacuate water. Okay, now that the water has been drained out of the pit, I'm going to reach down in and examine. And, I can, and you'll see there's plenty of sediment and rocks. And we're going to scoop, scoop that out until it's completely clean. Okay, so now that we've cleaned out the debris and sediment in the bottom of the sump pit, we've wiped it down, it's ready for us to install our new pump. This model happens to have a vertical float that's integrated into the unit. Uh, additional items needed to in make this installation complete would be a check valve with rubber coupling. Uh, various tools to make the job complete would include a tape measure, a pencil, a couple of different ways to cut the pipe with a PVC saw or some snips along with several runs of PVC pipe. We'll have a couple connectors and of course the primer and glue and then a coupling to finish off the job. I'm installing the check valve into the volute discharge and then I will tighten it with a pipe wrench. Okay, the next step after installing the check valve is to take a piece of PVC pipe, insert it, tighten up the, the clamp, and we're going to go ahead and lower the entire assembly down inside the pit. You have to keep in mind that we want to make sure that the float doesn't touch the sidewalls and we want to make sure that the pipe comes out in the proper orientation relative to the protective lid that sits on top of the pit and I will demonstrate that now. Okay, this is perfect orientation. We're going to go ahead and remove the lid. And the next steps will be cutting pipe so that we can fit up the 90 degree fittings here. And we'll have another one back here that will connect to the final pipe with a rubber coupling. At this point, I have marked the pipe to the proper location and height. I'm going to finish cutting through the pipe in this step.
Now I'm going to dry fit the 90 degree elbow onto the pipe I just cut off. I'm going to put the lid back on to make sure the fitting, the fit up is proper. Next thing I will do is I will, as a, a little tip or trick, I can put this pipe on the end of here and I need to measure my connecting piece from here to here and then I can eyeball the distance and I will mark the pipe and I will cut it to length. Okay, continuing the dry fit connection, I will insert this into the first 90 degree elbow, remove my elbow from the upper pipe, and now I have to measure the last piece from the inside of the coupling to the bottom of this riser pipe. Okay, now I will connect the last piece of the dry fit to the 90 degree elbow. And one last piece to put on here will be the rubber coupler. Loosen up the hose clamps. Slide it up on the pipe. Okay, now we have this fully connected and it's still dry fit. The little tip is to take and mark every connection before you disassemble it so that way when you go to glue it up it goes back together the way you intended it to. So I'm going to mark a line here, a line here. We just completed primering each joint and gluing each joint and everything is sound. We added zip ties to the power cord to make sure that it does not get caught up in any of the float or any of the surrounding pump activity. Next step is to plug it in. Okay, the next step is to take a bucket of water and pour it into the sump pit to check to make sure the pump operates properly. Okay, the final step, we made sure the pump was working properly. And we're going to go ahead and put the sump pit cover back on and be completed with this installation.